Well, I'll take from a class that I love, and so I'm a classical mythology. I teach that every semester, and I will never get tired of it. Um, I think one thing I emphasize in my class in mythology is archetypes. So, uh, and that can mean so many different things, right? So if we look at archetypes in terms of storytelling narratives, right, Ar archetypal narratives, uh, but archetypal people and characters, right? And so I think that if one thing people take away and students take away from, from my class, from mythology class, is knowing archetypes of characters. Looking at Greco-Roman mythology, there's a, a wide array of different characters you meet. Right? And these characters repeat in history. We know these characters. That's why it's so relatable to us, right? We know this sort of bravado of the hero. We know that. We see that all around us. This idea of like the strong man, right? I mean, you could relate that to politics too. So, I mean, that's incredibly, I think, important for them to see that it's almost psychological insight, right? In terms of like understanding personalities. But also for me, what I emphasize in my myth class is the takeaway of myth and art, right? So not to relate back to my project, but it's so important because it gets them to see the antiquity around them, right? To see that there's myth has continually inspired in material culture, especially in art and architecture. Um, and I think that's incredibly empowering for them to be able to go anywhere in New York City or any other place and be able to identify things on buildings that they previously would not, wouldn't, wouldn't know of and maybe wouldn't even register visually for them because they didn't know what it was. Right? So if you don't know it, it's almost like you don't even see it anymore. And so it's, you actually can't see it, right? You know, sort of the psychology of the mind and like vision, right? And so I think that being able for them to sort of take something very concrete like that out of the classroom and be able to say, I can identify these gods in art and in architecture and in, in, in the built environment um, is a way for them to see how it's been so important. Greece and Rome have been very important in uh, our own culture. Um, well, I think it means, one, I think it means something for them because they're able to now engage with public art in a way that they couldn't before, right? I think a lot of, um, and by public art, I mean in particular public sculpture, right? So a lot of sculpture in any city is, can be in some ways very alienating. Who's this person, right? And maybe there's a plaque and so on, right? So usually they're historical figures, but I think um, when they're mythological figures, that adds a different layer. It's like, why is this... Um, quote unquote pagan god, right? Being uh, reified in this very, and honored and given a significant you know, space uh, in uh, a modern country, right? It's like, uh, in, at least in the United States, having a quote unquote Christian past, right? And sort of founding. But this idea is sort of, you know, in, 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 in our own built environment, right? So what do they take away? So they take something away from themselves, right? that they are empowered, that they can understand that. And I think that then allows them to be able to question what it meant at the time. So why was this put up then, right? Uh, you can't ask that question necessarily until you know what it is that you're looking at, right? Um, at least not in any meaningful way. So that they're able to identify, say, a statue of Athena. It allows them to be able to question sort of the history of that and why was this god uh, important for them, uh, say, in the 1800s. It gives them a window into another time period's interaction with antiquity. So they have their own interaction, right? Which perhaps is from a classroom, right? Engaging with text one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But at the same time, then they're able to see, hey, look, someone else did this too, right? Someone else maybe read these same things and was inspired by it. And here was one product of it that was culturally relevant at the time. And maybe they are not... Uh, culturally relevant now, right? There's not more statues of Minerva being produced, but it was at one point, right? And so it gives them an insight into themselves, right? So that's one way of looking at uh, a sculpture like that and seeing how it was relevant at one point uh, and maybe not so much now. Well, why is that now, right? You could ask the same question of their own time period. So I think it allows for, uh, again, building attention with the past and the present and different times in the past and the present.